Welcome to the next instalment of AgriVision Agronomy Channel. Today I have with us Matt Bissett. He's going to speak to us about pulse, crop topping and desiccation timing. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Thanks, Kate. Pulses in the Mallee and the Wimmera give us a great opportunity to top out grasses. The abilities there, not everyone takes up that, that opportunity to have a hit on grass. Matt's going to give us all the pointers to getting the best out of your pulse crop. So as Kate mentioned, we're going to talk about some of the reasoning and key decision making processes behind the desiccation and crop topping of our pulse crops. Herbicide resistance has become a major issue across Australia in our farming systems and pulses have played an integral part, I suppose, of getting in on top of those weeds and moving forward with our, with our systems. Pulse crops have a great fit in our system because they allow us to use a suite of different options for herbicide resistance management. We've got a number of different modes of action available to us for use in our pulse crops in terms of herbicide use and coupling that with some non-chemical options such as narrow windrow burning, we can, uh, we can manage our resistance much easier than what we can with a cereal based rotation. So looking at desiccation and crop topping, obviously we've got that ability with the crop topping depending on your crop type and your variety to get some or reduce weed seed set uh, at harvest time. Uh, and also with the desiccation side of things, we're looking to even up and speed up our harvest timing. So when we're looking at the timing of crop topping in our pulse crops, we'll firstly look at some lentils and the sample plant that I've got here. Uh, these lentils haven't potted fantastically due to the conditions, but basically what we've got, top to bottom of the plant, when we're looking at our timing, we want to look at the top third of the plant having at least 50% seed colour change. And with the remaining 50% of seeds, you want them to be able to split in your finger rather than squash and push out moisture. So simply by just peeling a pot open, pulling the seed out, and when you squeeze it between your fingers, you should be able to split it in half rather than squash it out. Like lentils, lupins are quite quick to mature and a great option for crop topping. When we look at the timing, we're looking for 80% leaf drop. And that's basically when the leaves up and down the stem have turned a yellow brown colour. You'll get some that have dropped off the plant and others that haven't, but as long as they've turned, that's basically enough to, uh, to regard it as a, as a leaf drop. So field peas can be a little bit more difficult to get the timing to match up for crop topping, but if we're growing our earlier season varieties like Twilights, Gunyas and Whartons, we generally can get this to happen. So when it comes to timing, basically what we're looking for is the bottom two thirds of the pods to have turned a yellowy brown colour and be quite leathery in appearance. The seeds inside those are generally quite firm and hard with the top pods that have still got a bit of green in them generally splittable and not squashable. Very much similar to what we've got with lentils. Well, thanks Matt, another really timely and informative piece of advice from AgriVision Consultants. As Matt says, talk to your local consultant to get advice that suits your situation.